there is something worse than hunger and starvation. The knowledge that you are abandoned by the world. The notion that your life and the life of your children and your wife is absolutely meaningless. The awareness that human life has become worthless, that it is like the flotsam in this water, and that the world can send cameras and there can be stories about you, and it means nothing. That you were abandoned to die before the eyes of the world. You shall not stand idly by while the blood of your brothers and sisters cry out to you from the earth. Every human life is sacred. The daily abuse of religion threatens world peace. The Tannenbaum Center works to reduce and prevent violence perpetrated in the name of religion. Tannenbaum's peacemakers are men and women who struggle day to day in areas of armed conflict. Through their retreats, monetary support, and peacemakers network, Tannenbaum provides these grassroots human rights leaders a forum for resolving some of the world's most horrifying conflicts. Tannenbaum also goes into the workplace and provides training and research to executives regarding religious bias and diversity. In a post-9-11 America, U.S. Muslims reported a 50% rise in harassment and other civil rights violations. The 21st century has seen a dramatic increase in anti-Semitic incidents in five European Union countries, including Germany, the UK, Belgium, the Netherlands, and France. Tannenbaum provides curriculum for public schools where children are especially vulnerable to prejudice. Through Tannenbaum's curricula and training for educators, they provide the tools to turn any classroom into a supportive and inclusive environment. I think there is an opportunity here, both within the United States and throughout the world, for the mission of the Tannenbaum Center to be carried forward. If you can reach across the religious divide in countries and regions where people's religious identity is stronger than any other identity, you can actually accelerate the process of peace and reconciliation. Difference can be a source of enrichment rather than a threat. Peace is the only way. Whether in Cairo or Jerusalem, Oslo or Damascus, wherever they choose, the conflicting parties must talk to each other, negotiate and compromise. There is a tendency to think of us and them. People choose to hate. People are taught to be cruel to others. And so it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. As a first sense of obligation is to do something real, to carry out righteous deeds in this world, to help people in need everywhere.